Hello everyone, welcome to Big Data Thoughts. Today we are going to talk about metadata driven architecture. What is it? How can we use it? And what are the benefits? So let's get started. First of all, let's talk about a bit of a background as to what is needed in a data platform and the whole journey. And then we will talk about metadata driven architecture. So whenever we build some kind of a data platform or a platform where we are getting data from different sources and then we are trying to get clean that data, transform it and generate some insights. So what do we do? We collect data and from that data, there's, there's a lot of data that we collect, but not everything may be really relevant or useful. So what we try to do is we try to clean, aggregate, transform the data to get information out of it or something which is relevant and useful for us, which gives us business insights. So the ultimate aim of building any data platform is to get some business insight out of all the data that we have collected so far. So that's the whole intent. Now, in this journey, when uh, we started storing data and then uh, generating business insights, earlier we were using data warehouses. Now data warehouses were primarily schema on write where you would write data. There is a predefined schema and every data that comes in would actually fit into that schema, has to fit into that schema. And in that process, you lose a lot of data because you have to adjust the data, whatever is coming into the predefined schema. Then came the data lakes. The whole concept of having a data lake was that there was no restriction as to what you store. It was a schema on read. So you could practically store every kind of data, all types into one location. And while reading, you decide how you want to read that and what should be the schema. So it transitioned from data warehouses to data lake. But then somewhere in between, people felt that, okay, data warehouses had this concept of um, uh, relationship between the tables, referential integrities, primary key, and all of that, acid properties, which we have been using for ages. But data lakes were different because they were actually operating on a distributed architecture. So these concepts of primary key, referential integrity, uh, acid properties all went away. And it was a new world altogether. But then people felt that they really need those acid properties or the things that uh, data warehouses provided. So came the concept of data lake house, which is a combination of a data warehouse and a data lake. So all throughout this journey, the complexity did increase in terms of how do you accommodate the new data or new things, new changes that are coming in. So you are integrating data from many sources and bringing it to a data lake. But over a period of time, you would see that there are new data sources getting added which may have a completely different schema that you need to incorporate now in your existing one. Also, certain times the existing data source may add certain attributes. There may be changes to the column data types or any kind of changes which will come, those need to be accommodated. Now doing that was difficult when we were talking, we are talking about a big data world where there is huge amount of data. There are so many columns probably that we have created, different ways and we are ingesting and reading the data. So it became really relevant to think about how to make all of this configurable or have minimum possible changes to the code because doing a code change requires a lot uh, more bigger cycle of doing the change, um, testing it out, deploying to different environments, etc. So is there a way to make it configurable or easier so that the coding effort is minimum possible? And that is where the need of a metadata driven architecture came in. So for any effective BI implementation, metadata architecture is the core of uh, that architecture. <coughs> it provides a very vital context of various elements. So it tells you metadata is nothing. It is data about the data. So metadata helps you in actually storing all the information about the data, the relationships, the formats, the context of the data. And that can help you to actually uh, change the data as you need. Now metadata also gives you broader business details like the process, the definitions that are associated with a particular set of data. 
सो बेसिकली अ मेटाडेटा ड्रिवन आर्किटेक्चर विल हेल्प अस टू मेक आर होल ई टी एल प्रोसेस वेरी वेरी कॉन्फिगरेबल एंड एनी कैंड इट इट मेक्स दिस होल प्रोसेस फ्लेक्सीबल सो इफ देर आर एनी चेंजेस दैट कम इन इट कैन बी ईजीली इनकॉर्पोरेटेड नाउ लेट एस फर्स्ट अंडरस्टैंड वॉट आर द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ मेटाडेटा दैट वी कैन स्टोर सो द फर्स्ट वन इज so primarily there are many types but broadly speaking these are the three the descriptive metadata administrative and structural so descriptive metadata means metadata information which we need to discover a data resource any data uh, that we are storing how do we discover that it describes everything about that data resource that has come in what when where and who basically the entire audit it contains the information about the content and the context of the data so that's the descriptive metadata the second is administrative metadata administrative metadata means it provides information which we will need to manage that resource something where it tells you about the whole governance access control and security of that data and the third is the structural metadata structural metadata is the information that helps you to establish relationship between different objects so these are the three primary categories and the if we store this metadata it will help us to make this whole etl process very very uh, flexible and configuration driven uh, one more thing to remember is that when we talk about metadata driven architecture it is something like declarative programming which is not uh, our usual procedural or object oriented programming the reason being when we are doing a metadata based etl this why do we say it is a declarative programming style because this there is a clear distinction between what should be done and how it should be done so metadata is the part where it defines what should be done it's just like a data dictionary that is defining your data's context content mappings data model data type any transformations that you do and the how to part is the code that you write but primarily metadata is driving the what should be done the what part of the equation so we can compare it to a declarative programming style now let's talk a bit about how can we implement this metadata driven architecture so it can be implemented at different levels at the data ingestion layer at the data transformation layer at the data governance layer so if we talk about data ingestion uh, if it is metadata driven what would typically uh, we what would we do we would have the entire information about what data are we getting from a data source there is a defined schema so every time you ingest data you are reading that schema and checking if your existing table structure is complying with that or not if not if there is a new let's say there is a new column added or there is a data type change what you would do is you would simply do that change in the definition of the schema and the code that we write would be in such a way that it parses that schema file reads it and accordingly makes changes into the underlying data or table structure so while we are first time writing this whole framework of data ingestion we will keep in mind that there is a configuration which defines the schema for us and our code reads that configuration every time to enforce it on the underlying data so that way if there is a change uh, in data type in addition of column removal of column or all of that it is just a matter of adding that into the schema configuration and our framework takes care of enforcing it on the data so this is how the metadata will help you similarly if we are doing data transformations we do not hard code all the business rules data quality rules into the code it is configuration driven so what we do we extract out all those rules put it in a configuration file or a date uh, a table where from where we read it so if there is a change in the rule we don't have to touch the code we just go and change the configuration or the rule that we have defined in a table that way we are extracting out the uh, entire logic into a metadata and we are not touching the code at all if any of those transformations rules get altered or a new rule is added 
so the the whole benefit of having this kind of an architecture and this needs to be thought through from the beginning when we are designing this whole system because this will help us in terms of year over year maintenance or the time we spend in incorporating the changes on the data source side and it is bound to happen because we are work, operating in a very dynamic world there are so many sources that are there they may change new ones may come so the world this entire premise is dynamic hence the way we write our code also needs to be thought through in a way where there is minimum change to the code and maximum it can be handled by configuration or metadata that is why the significance of metadata driven architecture is increasing day by day now what is the advantage of this metadata driven architecture first of all uniformity because if we define a metadata metadata driven framework it is standardized it is generic the data ingestion transformation process becomes very very generic it's not hard coded where you change the code every time this makes this whole understanding of the pattern uh, very simple and uh, configuration driven there is of course agility if we define such a framework it gives a lot of flexibility agility in terms of creating and changing configurations so any change will primarily involve changing the dmls or the metadata without actually requiring a code change which is critical to the essence of having a agile uh, methodology so it gives us agility uniformity it is easy to scale of course when it has it is agile it can incorporate new changes it is easier to scale maintainability becomes easier the development cycle reduces because we are not touching the code as far as possible or it is just a minimum change so overall having this kind of a configuration or metadata driven framework really helps us in reducing the time uh, and helping us to maintain the code easily but then when we spoke about building uh, <coughs> such a framework one thing to be kept in mind is we should not over engineer or um, if it if you see that defining the metadata and building a metadata driven uh, framework is becoming more complex than coding itself then definitely defining such a metadata solution is useless so we need to evaluate as architects or as designers of the system we need to evaluate what makes sense does it make sense to have a metadata driven framework or is my system really not that complex or things are not that dynamic that it is just about you know not going for such a thing so it's a conscious conscious decision that we make based on our own scenario but otherwise there is definitely a value add in having a configuration or metadata driven framework so i hope this has given you a brief insight into what a metadata driven architecture is and why people are talking about it so much now what are the benefits so please like share and subscribe to the channel for more interesting videos thank you